What's up, y'all? And welcome back to another episode of All the Mods 8. Body. Hold on, I gotta make body sit real quick. Body, go sit. Body sitting. Good. Today, we are gonna be continuing our power automation and we'll be making power, actual power this time, using the thermo generators that we see behind me and the reactor that we see over there. I still want to test out to see what is the best power sources to use, and I'm gonna be using this in my All The Mods 8 speed run that I'll be doing sometime in March, hopefully, fingers crossed. I also want to say thank you guys again for all the support. I appreciate you. If you are liking these videos, maybe you're learning a thing or two, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a ton as we are almost to 4,000 subscribers. I think we might actually hit 4,000 by the time this video's out. Hopefully, maybe. We'll see. Maybe it's maybe. Also know that this video and last video, we've been spending a lot of time in a crafting menu. And I know. Trust me, we're going to get to the adventures soon enough. Because on next episode... We're gonna become a wizard. I'm kind of excited for that one too. So we're gonna pick up right where we left off and that was creating power using power. Let's do this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the recipes for these thermo generators and I'm gonna see how much power they produce. I don't know what this, I don't know if you guys can hear the breathing or not, but it's like right over my shoulder almost the entire time. And I know it's not in real life because then I would cry deeply in Spanish if that was the case, but I definitely hear something and I'm not sure what it is. And we're going to make sure we get this thermo plate recipe as well. And then let's see thermo generator. Let's see if we can make at least the spirited version. Cause I know for a fact we can't make the nitro. We can make the spirited version. Let's go ahead and make one of these. Give us some time to craft. I wonder how fast this thing would actually. Oh, don't tell me it's already done. Okay. The thermo generator is actually pretty cool. So if you place this down over something that creates some kind of heat, this should in theory create power, but it needs a bucket of water. So that's kind of important, which I need to get my sink from out. We never even finished moving everything from out here. I still need to move all this inside. Oof. I haven't even set my home back over here. So we're going to give this some liquid here and it should start producing power. This is producing 2.2 thousand Fe per tick. So 2,240. I wonder if it's based on how much water I give it. It could definitely take some more water. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a sink real quick. I don't know if I can actually make a sink or not. I wonder. Oh, I can. Cool. And we can move this down. Let's do that. So blazing crystal right here. Thermo generator right on top of it and give it some water. I don't think you actually need to give this thing like, oh, does it? Yeah, it actually does use it. So we will actually need to s supply this with infinite water. So we can make a couple of these. Let's go ahead and make a couple of these spirited generators here. Let's go ahead and make four more so I can have five of them and let that be crafting. And then let's see, do I have any fluid pipes? I do. I wonder if this wrench actually works for the fluid pipes. Let's see. So we're going to go backwards. I need to break this. Oh my God, I put efficiency on my pickaxe and now it's like so fast. And this way I can just put the water right up here like this. And then we pull from it, can it? Oh, no, okay, so the power wrench does not work. Use the pipe wrench here and then we do ultimate pipe upgrade. And then now this should stay having some water and it's producing, generates 800 Fe per tick, but it's actually saying it's generating 2,240 Fe per tick, which is pretty good, honestly, considering how, I wouldn't say that this is cheap, but when you're at the point where you have 142,000 emeralds and you're just vibing, I guess it's not really that bad of a thing because you have the power set up from over there, right? Body, this is, body. So we could actually make a whole row of these spirited ones. And let's see if our spirited generators are done. Oh, they are all done. So we can grab this and then we can grab the blazing stuff here. So I'm going to grab this right here and then we can actually just make a row of this blazing crystal down. And then we can put all these generators on top of them. And with all five of these, it is producing about 11,200 Fe per tick for five of these, right? That's pretty good. So to compare, this right here is our gas burning generator. Now it won't show it right now because it's not pulling as much as it possibly can, but I can show you this by making something to make it pull even more. This is such a bad idea. I don't suggest anybody doing it, but I already have done this before and I just want people to see that you can do this. So the energy trash can voids any energy that's being pulled from whatever it is that you put it on. So let's say if I break this right here, and I grab myself. Well, never mind. I just disabled power to this thing. It looks like oh, this is a plug. Oh, yeah. I've disabled power to this. So this has no power. Maybe we should make the let's go move the plug over there. And now if I take this plug, we're going to want to make some power cables across the top here. But for right now, we'll just stick this plug down right here. 
and set this to my network and that should give me power enough so I can actually grab my pipes out because that's kind of important. And we could just take these pipes across the top here, make sure we extract. And these pipes aren't actually gonna be fast enough because they only extract 256 per tick. So we'll have to put in a pipe upgrade into each one of these that's not requiring netherite because that's a little expensive. And now these are transferring enough to keep up with this by a long shot. So we have some power going in here, which is good. So let's go back and look at how much power we're actually generating. Okay, so this sucker is full. And like I said, it only generates enough power if and only if it needs it. So if we put this energy trash can right here and then we come over here and extract here and we go and we put ourselves the ultimate pipe upgrade in here. Now we can see that this is producing 39.9 thousand FE per tick. As long as it has the ethylene, it will completely just pull 39.9 thousand. And we did this on episode, what was it like two or three? So I'm gonna break this because that's uh that's not good. These are the basic ones too. So I'm not sure if this is actually pulling or can pull enough power, but we'll get the recipe for that a little bit later on. Yeah, so this is only gonna pull whatever it can pull, right? out of this. Let's go ahead and make ourselves another plug so that way we can use this power. Okay, so now we have access to whatever this ge or generates, right? So here's the thing. These things produce 2200, right? But they're not the best version. And uh, I kind of want to make the best version of these to see what they do. So let's do that. So how am I going to do that? Well, I've got to go kill some more withers. Body, you want to go kill some more withers with me? I can't remember if I was able to kill more than one at a time. Body, do you remember? I can't remember. Let's just try it. You know, maybe... Maybe we won't die. I placed this wrong. Oh, I was supposed to do multiple. Oh no. Oh well. Body, you ready to kill this guy? Get him, Body! Body, are you just hugging him or are you gonna actually kill this guy? Body, what was that, dude? You didn't even do anything. You just hugged him. We gotta work on our teamwork. I always had a question. Can you make him multiple like this? Yes. I always wondered that. I guess we figured that out. Body? I was about to say, buddy, you better not leave me. We're making two of them. This was probably a really bad idea. Buddy, don't! All right, now that that's over with and we have like two frames per second, we can go ahead and make ourselves some of those nitro crystals, right? If we take and we go, let's see. Let's see what it takes to make those nitro crystals now. Are those nitro generators? So we're going to need two nitro capacitors per one of these. So that means I'm going to need 10 capacitors here. If I click on 10, I wonder if it'll let me craft all 10 of these. There's one. Is it making the crystals now? Oh yeah, they take 20 million, by the way. They take 20 million power to make this. So I'm glad that we made a little bit more because this is pulling 183,000 FE per tick when it does make it. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 183,000. Okay, that's a little bit more power than we actually... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. A little bit more than I'd, I'd like. All right, did it make those nitro things? It did, sweet. So we needed 10 of those. We needed 10 of these thermo plates. So if I go thermo plates, we can make 10 of these. I'm doing this because it doesn't automatically make them because I have the other ones. And I think we have just about everything that we need to make this except for the generator. So I'm just gonna break all of these real quick. And then we're gonna go ahead and put these in here so we can upgrade them to nitro. All right. Here's our five. Go ahead and place these down. And this is the max power ones. And then we can go ahead and take our wrench and draw power from each of these. Make sure we upgrade it to the max. And now each of these are producing 5,600 FE per tick. So with five of these, just to put this in perspective, we are producing 28,000 FE per tick from here. And these all hold 40 million FE on top of that, which is pretty nice, except for the problem is well, that's still not that much. These five together, while relatively easy to make minus the nether stars, this is not bad for power right here. This is the worst, right? This is this isn't bad. I still think the gas ones are better, but we have one more thing that we can test. The reactors. Now, the interesting thing about the reactors is, is just the same as before. You can make these and it does take the previous tier to make it. And you need 36 of these blocks here to be able to make all the way up. So we're gonna go ahead and go get the recipes and let's see if we can make these. All right, with all of that in there, we're gonna try and make 36 of the nitro ones, which I highly doubt we can actually make. We have everything. We just need three more nether stars and uh, the redstone, blocks of redstone. So we pretty much have everything because the uranonite we actually have, we just haven't smelted. We have a bunch of this. So we can actually just get the recipe for this over here for us to use that. Just smelt this to get their smelting recipe, put this over here into this. And then if we put this in here, we also want to grab the iron bar recipe. So if I come over here and do iron bar, we can grab this. 
recipe if I hit R on it, right? We could also grab the grab the redstone block recipe. So if I hit U here, we can grab that recipe and then that'll take care of that problem. So now all we're missing is three more nether stars. So we're gonna go get some more nether stars. Oh, all right, bring it on. I ain't got all day. Run, Fox, run! It's like he's trying to come help me. Are you coming to help me? Did he just shake his head? Yes, bro. Oh, I think that's just their animation. God, it looks so dirty. Is that his eyes on the side? Oh, okay. So I thought the dots were their eyeballs and you can't unsee that. What do you think the eyes of the eyeballs, like the little dots on the outer edges are eyeballs? You just can't, maybe it is, man. They look derpy. All right, now we can go ahead and just make 36 of these. Now it's got to make all of the other stuff too. So this is going to take a little while. I'm just going to hit start and, uh, well, I, good God, that's fast. I'll be back when this is done. You know, we haven't checked on a demon in a while. You good, bro? Hello? Anyway, back at it, bro. Good luck to you. Okay, do we have it? We got all 36 of these. Sweet. So with 36 of these, we're going to center it along this so it looks really cool. We're going to go ahead. If you just right click this somewhere, it'll automatically start placing it based on where you placed it. And I think I didn't place it far back enough. No, that's actually fine. I'll take it. And it auto generates the reactor which is cool. Now, important things to know about here is that you're gonna need some uraninite. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually ask this to craft me about a thousand. So it's gonna smelt all that uraninite that I have. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this uraninite in here. So the way this works is that it fills itself up with uraninite. It burns some of that uraninite and makes some power. Right now it's generating 133 FE, or 133,000 FE per tick and it's going down. This is actually much better than this. All five of those. But this one actually takes a bunch of different things. So it takes coal, it takes uraninite, and it takes some water. I don't think you actually have to do anything extra with water. I think I, somebody told this to me in all the mod seven was that once you have water in it, it's permanently cooled. But you could always go to power and double check by making this here book, which I'm gonna go ahead and make real quick. And then we're gonna double check on the manual here for reactors. So it needs coal, redstone, uraninite, and some kind of coolant in the bottom. So it says you can use water. Also, you can use a solid coolant like snow or ice for extra coldness. Solid coolants require liquid coolant to work. Keep the reactor buffer full of fuel for better production. So we need some redstone. So we place all three of these in here. We're now generating 150, okay, it's steadily going down, but we're generating over 150,000 FE per tick and it's going up as it makes more, which is actually a ton. So we're gonna need another plug. I'm gonna stick the plug right here because there's a little red dot, actually. Let's put it like right here because there's a little dot there and to set this to my network. And now we can tap into this, but this stores 500 million FE and it also produces a lot of FE. I think the actual like max you can get this thing to is 250,000 FE per tick, which is actually kind of insane. That's not bad for, you know, a couple of nether stars. This That's pretty good. Just to put this in perspective, this reactor right here just by itself it's probably a little expensive but this is producing about five or six times more somewhere in that general range somewhere between four to six times more than our one singular gas burning generator and it's also producing way more than all five of these together which is kind of wild too and you could actually make this faster the only thing is is that it does require more fuel it takes fuel it takes redstone and it takes coal buddy we can set up an automated way to put all of that in here. So coal, redstone, and uraninite just to keep it full. All we would need is another one of those network receivers. So what we could do right here is we could put our receiver right here, hit this with our network card, and then we could take an exporter right here and we can come over here and we can grab out, let's do blocks of coal and let's see how that works. So we'll do a block of coal, a block of redstone, and then I don't think you could do uraninite blocks. Not 100% sure, but let's see how this works. So we come over here, we put these in here. We want to make sure that we put a regulator and crafting upgrade in there, and then we can set these to 64, so that way it always keeps it full as much as it can. We will need to make the recipes for both of those, I believe. Maybe not the redstone, but definitely for this block of coal. So that way, at least we know how to make it. And now we just come over here and stick our transmitter right here, put the card in, and we should actually be getting all of these. If we take all of these out, minus the uraninite. Oh yeah, we got to put uraninite in here. See, now I wonder if it actually lets me do a block of uraninite. Can we do a block? Let's see. Nope, it's got to be normal uraninite. 
Okay, so you're in a night, 64. Stick this in here. And now we are producing 157,000 FE per tick and it's staying at that. Granted, we aren't using that, so it doesn't really matter. But the way we can increase this is by getting some kind of ice. And Pala does actually have, I believe it's called dry ice is the best. So dry ice is made out of blue ice. So two blue ice here, and it's just Blue ice is obviously just packed ice. Packed ice is just ice. And I believe dry ice is like the best that you can get. So we'll just have to make a trip to go get some ice. Let's just use our nature's compass to see if we can find any kind of peaks nearby. All right, I guess we go, looks like 3000 blocks this way. And now we just wait a couple of years for this to load. Hmm. Hello? Oh, oh, it's loading. Oh, I'm moving. Why am I moving? I'm not moving. Is that packed ice? It is. Hello, sir. Goodbye, sir. I wonder if I could use this shovel. The answer is yes. Okay, that's apparently all the ice that I had and I had no brass, so we're just gonna go ahead and make a bunch of blue ice out of it, all 17 of it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put these two in here and it should make me some dry ice. All right, we have eight dry ice, which this fills it up. And now we should be able to see how much power we can generate. So let's let this thing tick up and see what it makes us. So we bottled out at 235,000 FE per tick, which actually is really good. Like I'm gonna be completely honest with you. That's not bad at all. 235,000 is really, really good, especially considering the fact that this also can hold 500 million FE. So we have 500 million FE just kind of chilling over here. That's that's actually kind of crazy. And this is almost all, like it's almost automated. We get a lot more from dry ice, which is actually really good. I mean, it's it's keeping the coolant down, which is really nice. So this is pretty good. 235,000 for as easy as I've got it, like as easy as we made it. Granted, you will need to make some more nether stars and we can do that in a later episode. But honestly, this is not bad. Bad. just to casually throw something together that makes that makes 235,000 I'll take it so Bye's just gonna stay back there being all weird and stuff but that's okay all right this is future Alfred I just finished setting up this reactor and everything but we ended up scooting it over here reconnecting it I don't know if I did this in the video or not yet but I'm gonna just say it in case I hadn't you want to make sure your plug goes in that part right there even though that's red right there believe it or not that red spot uh that doesn't actually connect you got to connect it in this yeah you know, i think you can connect it on any side but yeah just just so you guys know i moved some things over i made this look a little bit better right here as you see we have it all nice and clean and uh, essentially all i did was i moved the router to be right here beside it has to connect to the crafter right here and then the crafter right here is connected to the interface and underneath there is the network receiver that connects all of this to my system which is pretty cool it's Brian in here. I ain't gonna lie. We clean this up over here, move this up over a little bit. You know, it's not too bad looking. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this doesn't give me the feels that I want to for a factory, especially for a power building, right? Now, this is all concrete, and I just recently changed it to concrete because I want to know what it looks like, but I think I want to change it a little bit more. So we're gonna do a couple of more auto crafting things as a little bonus, just so I can show you guys what that's about and how I would do some auto crafting things, especially if you're trying to like automate getting concrete or automate getting certain good looking blocks. So so let's do that. So here's my room over here, crafting room, nothing special, nothing crazy. I did end up, when I made that uh, picture before, I forgot to reconnect it right here and everything was just kind of sitting in here and it kind of made me laugh. Cause a lot of people in my comments were like, hey Alfred, how is this connected to your system? You know, that's just, you know, that's just my bad. It wasn't. But now it's connected to my system right here. It was connected going down right there, but I just connected to that so I could be simple. Nothing too crazy. I, I wish there was a way we could just wirelessly do this. Okay, I'm getting ADHD. We got focus. What we're we doing? Okay, yeah, we were going to set up an automation thing for concrete because I have some automated stuff for concrete. Oh, hey, buddy. Don't worry about it. This is, uh, this is my automated concrete setup right here, y'all. So cool. It isn't really automated, but let's say if I want to come over here and type in concrete, let's say I want to make myself some concrete right here, some white concrete powder. I have to come over here, right click this, and then I got to wait for my create fan to blow this dry, you know, just, just wait for it. Any day now, just a waiting. Any day, any day now. Oh, well, you might be wondering, hey, Alfred, you know, that's not too bad. It takes forever. Plus, this is ugly. Look how ugly this is. We go. We got to do something different. So what are we going to do? We're going to use mechanism because mechanism is actually dope. So aside from just getting the basic recipe that we're going to need here, we just get the recipe sticking in an auto crafter. We're actually going to need 
one more recipe and that is from the chemical injection chamber. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit A on this right here so I can get the recipe, which I don't think it's actually too difficult. Nothing too crazy, just a purification chamber plus some elite stuff, not too bad. But yeah, basically you combine things with steam or water vapor and uh, it'll give you, it'll basically do the same thing as if, you know, that fan out there, which is kind of nice. It also, I believe, oxidizes things too, if you have just straight up water. But we need to produce steam too, or water vapor, whichever one. And the way we do that is we make a rotary condensator. Condensator. Con God, that's a, that is a big word. All you gotta do is take some water, throw this sucker in here, and it'll give you water vapor, and then we could use that. So... Let's get all the recipes first and make that. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and click this, get the basic recipe here for the chemical injection chamber. But we're also going to need the purification chamber. And we're also going to need the enrichment chamber, which I believe we have all the recipes for everything else. So that should be it for this one. And we're gonna need a recipe here for the rotary condensator. And we're gonna need the recipe for the basic fluid tank and for the basic chemical tank as well. We'll take and shove all this in here. And now we should be able to make, hopefully be able to make all of it. So let's start with the rotary condensator. Let's see if we can make that. We only need one. Ah, we don't have the energy tablet recipe. And bam. This should be able to make us one of them. Sweet. There's our rotary condensator. Now, what about the chemical injection chamber? Can we make that? Ah, we don't know how to make steel casings. Let's change that. Now, we'll note while I'm doing this as a side thing, you are going to actually need one of these later down the road. And you probably actually have this if you're doing the mechanism like four times or five times or processing stuff. You might already have it, but I'm really just making it so I can make my floors look pretty. So I'm going to take this chemical injection chamber. I'm going to break this right here and then... Did I already not already have that? Oh, I guess it's because it's, I didn't pick up. Okay, that makes sense. All right, anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and place this chemical injection chamber right here. And now it's got power, but the problem is, is if we wanna make this, we need that water vapor or steam to do, to be able to, you know, power this up, turn things into what we want it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and get all the recipes here for concrete or whatever else that I would use these things for with water vapor. So let me go ahead and grab these recipes just for the concrete itself, not the concrete powder. So now we come over here to our chemical injection chamber. We're going to put our patterns right here. So that way it tells it how to make this stuff, which is cool. And then now if we put water vapor in here, we should be able to request things. So let's go ahead and make that water vapor. I am going to cheat and put this rotary condensator right here, which is kind of cool looking. What is this? Oh, that's the infusion factor. We're going to put that up. We're going to need a fluid pipe. And I wonder if this wrench will work. Nope, this wrench does not work. I'm kind of on like a mission now to see what wrenches work, which is kind of hilarious. You know what I just realized? You know, scratch putting it right there. We're going to put it right. I wanted to get power too, so I guess we could put it right here, right? All right, we're going to stick it right here so that way we can get the power into it. And then we should be able to toggle the operation. And then we're going to get this super loud sound. The water vapor is being made. God, that is so annoying. For those who don't know, you can click on this little muffler button right here. You can click that. And then you could just type in like for here. Here, this is a mechanism machine. So this one's the rotary condensator. So if I just click this button, peace and quiet. Except for my jetpack. Same thing, jetpack, turn it off. I don't want to hear myself flying. There ain't no point in all that. This is slow. Oop. Well, now it's out of energy. Oop. Well, now it's full. So how are we going to get the water vapor from here? over there and also one thing to note too is that if we look at this chemical injection chamber there is an issue here so the only slot that i have available is the bottom one which will work but we're going to need something very specific so we can transfer this gas technically i'm pretty sure it's considered a gas over to here so we're going to get a recipe for one of my favorite blocks in general for mechanism the quantum entanglo porter except for something very specific here we're also going to need an osmium compressor for this so let's go ahead and make all of those so here's the thing about this we're gonna have to switch some things up the osmium compressor is gonna need some osmium in it which means it needs an exporter from the bottom if i were to put this right here then I would have to trail a pipe along the backside to be able to connect this right here without switching these two up. So I wanna make sure that this is consistent. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate these machines a little bit, but I'm also gonna need to put these slabs and stuff here. Just so y'all know, this is a framed elevated slab. You place it down, it's very simple. And then you put whatever it is you want on top of it. So we have white concrete here. And then now we can start working our way, building up another slot here. So we're going to put a netherite crafter right here, chest right here. And then we're going to basically move everything down. I'm just going to take and make this one my concrete one. So this one would be fine. We're just going to move this one over. 
to right here. Take our ultimate pipe here. Boop, bop, beep. Cool. Now this one should be set back up. I will need to break the wall. By the way, there's an amethyst thing down here. It's kind of cool looking. And make sure we connect this to some power. This one was going to be my osmium compressor right here. So osmium compressor is going to make refined obsidian ingots. That's going to be important. So that's good that it goes there. Let's go ahead and make sure this is set up. We need an exporter in the bottom, which there already is one. Hey, look at there. I'm going to put a crafting upgrade, a regulator upgrade, and some osmium ingots here. We're going to set this to 64, I guess. And then that way it'll tell the system, hey, keep this full. Let's just keep the osmium ingots inside of here. See, it's stacking up. It's making them. I think it has to smelt it first because we don't have much. And then that'll fill this up. Cool. Osmium compressor is going. We can cover this back up. Wait, where does this go? Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. And now let's see if we can actually make ourselves one of those entanglo porters. Let's see if it'll let us make it. I'm gonna hit start and see what happens. Entanglo porters are cool. I'm gonna explain what they do here in a second. What is that god awful noise? Who thought this was a good idea for the sound for this machine? I'm gonna turn that off. That sounds like a frog choking to death. Like that was awful. Oh yeah, we gotta upgrade this. So just like my last episode, just shift click, boop, beat, and then ultimate. And now we got all of these going. Oh, is it not important? Why are you not important? Oh, it's cause I did it on the back. Oh, that makes sense. Now it'll outboard. Okay, cool. All right, input output yeah whatever the word is okay that should have made me an entangle porter except for the fact i need two so i'm gonna go ahead and make another one real quick let that go and uh, all these machines are lined up and then we're gonna go ahead and make sure we upgrade the rest of these because as you see they're all elite and i never made the ultimate ones i forgot to do that oh yeah we're missing this light just so you guys know this is called a dynamic edge light these things are cool and if i blaze this right here that's what it looks like because it's ugly so let me show y'all how you would fix this so to fix this, we're gonna break this block right here, which is a framed block. And then we're just gonna place a block right down on top of it. And now if we place this on here, it'll fix it to that side like that. Same thing here, place it there. But when you break it, it, it stays the same. So we're gonna take that slab here, place it down, put the concrete down. And now we've added to our system, which now this is makes it, this makes seven, right? Cause we have a easy middle piece, which makes me happy. I wanted to uh, make this like uneven number so I can have a middle. I like middle numbers. All right, so what exactly does a quantum entangle porter do? Well, let's go to our machine over here making us some steam. Well, technically it's water vapor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and throw this sucker down and we're gonna open it up. So the quantum entangler porter will allow you to transfer anything power, fluids, gases, everything across dimensions. It's pretty cool. And it also makes it where you can set a specific frequency. I've used this so many different times that I absolutely love it. There's upgrades for this thing. Anchor, oh, okay, that's cool, I guess. I didn't know you could upgrade it. Anyway, so this one, I'm actually going to set the frequency here to be water vapor, right? That's how you spell it. And we're gonna click this button and then we're gonna go to the side config here. We're gonna go ahead and clear this off because I don't actually want anything to go in or out of this machine except for the things that I want to because it's all going to go to that frequency and I don't want that. So with gases here, I'm gonna come over here and clear it and then I'm gonna input here and then I'm not gonna turn on auto eject or anything. And then over here in this one, we're gonna change the side config here and we're going to go to gases. We're gonna clear this out and then we're gonna do our output on the right side. And what this does is this actually pushes that water vapor that we create out to the right and it'll go into our quantum entangler porter. Yeah, normally hold and shift will show you the what's inside of it because there's a buffer in here, which is kind of important, but we'll mess with that a little bit later. Most notably, this thing can actually not keep up with the power for whatever reason, which is kind of impressive. How much power does this thing need? It needs 80,000, what? 80,000 FE per tick? Am I reading that right? Hello? We're gonna have to slow that down a little bit. I'm gonna just uninstall a couple of these. Well, so this is now pumping into our frequency of water vapor. So back over here. So here we have our ultimate injection factory. And um, you know, I'm gonna just go ahead and stick this right here. Why not? So in this, we're gonna take our water vapor. We're gonna set this, but first we're going to do the side. So again, I'm gonna clear all of this. I don't want anything to go in or out of this machine not even energy, anything like that. So that way I can keep my frequencies clear. You don't have to do that, but essentially like just so I can explain it, let's say if I put something right here that are even just the injecting factory here, if it outputs items to the right, 
and I don't have that set cleared, this quantum entangle porter does have a buffer, so it will hold whatever this outputs, and then I just won't know where it's at because it's in my quantum entangle porter specifically on the water vapor frequency. And that's why I always suggest on clearing all the sides and stuff first. You don't have to do like the pigments, the slurries, none of that stuff unless you're like actually working with it. But that's normally what I do. So then what I'm gonna go is I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna go to gases, and I'm gonna output on this left side, and I'm gonna turn on auto eject. And now when I set this water vapor frequency i click this button this one we already set up at the bottom for extra we don't need to do that see how this one says auto output on the right we don't want to do that let's go ahead and clear this and set this thing all up so bam we're going to input gases on the right and then for items we're going to input from the top output on the front and then we can we don't have to set anything else up because this works and now we should be able to automate making us some concrete. So let's test it. Let's say I wanna make a bunch of concrete. Let's say a couple stacks of these. It's gonna try and craft it because I have sand, gravel, I have enough bone meal and some black dye and stuff to make all this. So if I click start, it should shoot it all over here. And there we go. Automated crafting for concrete. You might wonder why you wanna do this for concrete. Well, the Patrick Star needs a bunch of different kinds of concrete. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, it makes it a whole lot easier when you got all the concrete recipes before you go and try and make this. And that's part of the star. But now it's all set up. I have a bunch of concrete. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a bunch of this. And I'm also gonna mute this cause uh, I'm, it's gonna drive me crazy listening to this. I, actually, that thing kinda had a beat. All right, let's make this place a little bit more factory-like. I feel like it's too wide in here, so let's start with some gray concrete. Okay, ignoring the ceiling, all right? Ignoring the ceiling here, okay? Ceiling looks pretty bad. We're gonna change that later, but you know, kinda I like this, this gray concrete, white concrete mix that we got going on here. I like the floor. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more decorating, move the ceiling up a little bit, change it from that Maybe I do kind of like the deep slate, so maybe I could do something with a deep slate that'll look good. But for right now, I kind of like the way this color's looking. It's almost more factory like. We'll see later on down the road. Guys, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the episode and want to see more, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I am prepping for my All the Mods 8 speed run that we're going to be doing very soon. And I'll let you guys know. Just keep a lookout in the community tab if you haven't yet, or maybe you'll hear it in a future video. Or it won't make a whole lot of sense if you come back and watching this like six years in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're for like a couple months down the road when the speed run's already done, y'all going to be like, hey, what, what, what is he even talking about? You know, I'm excited for next week. And uh, next week's no gone and past and everything but anyway guys thank you so much for watching and as always until next episode you guys stay safe stay sexy stay beautiful and bye